My name is Pastor Sam. I'm the lead pastor here. If you're making your way from our uh, cafe in, if you're joining us online, we're very, very glad that you joined us uh, today. Maybe you're at the cabin or on the lake right now, and whatever fish, there is a uh, 10% tithe to your pastor in fillets, so uh, bring it into the church. I'll take that. Um, but hey, I want to open up with a, a text. I have a, a pastor friend of mine from uh, in St. Paul, Maplewood area, who sends out a text every week. Uh, to a group of pastors, a group of community pastors. Obviously, we know that there was uh, uh, something tragic that happened yesterday, just an attack on a former President Trump's life. This is not a political opening to our service. I want to be very clear in that. But what happened yesterday matters, and we have a response, an opportunity as the people of God, as the church. How do we respond to things like this? And Pastor Mike sent this text out, and I loved it. He says, Proverbs 29.11 says this, Fools give vent to their rage, but the wise calm, bring calm in the end. There is such a real need today for leaders who are wise. It is imperative not to react to the world with emotions, but respond with wisdom. Rather than being led by our feelings, it is imperative that we are led by the Spirit. The Bible says that this is a key characteristic of the sons and daughters of God. What does this look like? And this is partly why I'm reading it this morning. It fits with our series we're doing this summer. Uh, They are the ones who respond to hate with love instead. They respond to discouragement with joy. They respond to irritation with peace. They respond to anger with patience. They respond to cruelty with kindness, evil with goodness, infidelity with faithfulness, violence with gentleness, and to a culture void of discipline with self-control. This is the kind of lifestyle, this kind of lifestyle will be tested, but in the end it will identify those who are... Everybody okay? Got it. Fair enough. So, hey, that, guys, I planned that. So everybody's awake at church today. I did not plan that. Uh, I was like, all right, man. Uh, This kind of lifestyle will be tested, but in the end, it will identify those who will ultimately make a real difference in the world. And so we are called as believers to respond in things uh, of the world with the fruit of the Spirit. We're not going to get caught into a political back and forth. There's going to be plenty and already has been on TV, all this stuff. That's not why I'm here today. I'm here today to glorify Jesus Christ. I'm here to say, thank God that President Trump's life was spared. We don't want to see any shed of death, any shed of uh, loss of life, right? We want to pray for leaders and people that God has put into authorities. Romans 13 uh, talks about that, Romans chapter 13. But above all, we want to be led by the Spirit. We want to be a church that is open to the move of the Spirit, to what God is saying, and we're being obedient to when He moves. And so our response today, my prayer, is that again, you have an opportunity this morning. Every Sunday, We're not creating a special kind of, you know, if we play the right song, then you'll respond and you'll cry. If I preach really good and tell enough funny stories, you'll be super happy and you'll go, man, that was a good service. Here's how it becomes a good service today. Because you say, Holy Spirit, I'm available in this moment right now. And I want to be used by you. I want to encounter you. I don't want to leave here the same way that I came in. I want your spirit to change me. And so today is another opportunity for us as the body of Christ to come together to worship, to pray for our nation because our nation needs healing. Our nation needs Jesus. And that's what's going to change everything. Amen? So let's stand up. Let's open in prayer today. Father, I thank you that we can come together under your name. Your name, Jesus, the name that is above every name, the name that where at some point, if they don't choose to, every knee will be forced to bow. But Lord, today we're choosing to bow ahead of time. We're choosing to bow to you, Jesus, because you are the Lord of everything. And so, Jesus, I do pray for President Trump's uh, recovery, Lord. I pray, God, for protection over all of our political leaders, God. I pray that this would not dive and delve into more chaos in our, in our nation, but you would bring healing. You would bring revival. You would bring a focus and an attention back to your holiness and your goodness and your favor. God, we want to be a people that is sensitive to you. So, Lord, what we can, for lack of better words, kind of control today, or what we can control is our response to you this morning individually. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. We ask you to meet us. We ask that you would do exactly what your word said you would do, that when two or three are gathered, your presence is here. When we're gathered in unity, you bless unity. And so, Father, we 
pray and believe and ask for your presence to meet us here today. And for those who couldn't make it, God bless them where they're at today. And Lord, we welcome you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's sing and worship the Lord together this morning. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb. Till I met you, I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide, it was my tomb. Till I met you, you called my name. freedom is all that I know the old made new Jesus when I met you cause you called me sin was heavy chains break at the weight of your glory i needed shelter i was an orphan now you call me a citizen of heaven when i was broken you were my healing now your love is the air that i'm breathing i have a future my eyes are open it's when you call my name and i Church, I don't know about you, but I hope you know that there is a God that has called you out of the grave that you're living in. He has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. But you have to take the step to follow him. You can just sit and you can sing the words and you can not do a thing and your life won't change. But you need to take the time to move where God is calling you to follow him out of darkness into his marvelous light. He has called your name. He is calling some of you this morning. He wants to do a new thing in you, and it's time that you trust him and follow him. So let's continue as we worship and we trust in our Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
blessed assurance Jesus is mine he's been my fourth man in the fire time after time born of his spirit and washed in his blood and what he did for Trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior. in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior. sought the Lord and he heard and he answered I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered that's why I trust him that's why I trust him I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered that's why i trust him that's why i trust him i sought the lord and he heard and he answered i sought the lord and he heard and he answered i sought the lord and he heard and he answered that's why i trust him that's why i trust oh i sought the lord and he heard and he answered my prayer and he heard and he answered i sought the lord and he heard and he answered that's why i trust him that's why i trust in god my savior the one who will never fail he will never fail trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Oh, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard and he answered that's why i trust him that's why i trust in god oh we trust you lord if 
you haven't heard an answer from the Lord, take some time to seek him. I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. That's why I trust him. We need to seek the Lord together today. Jesus, we do. We ask for more of your spirit in this place, God. Lord, we ask that you would give us hearts that would be turned to you, God. That you would give us hearts made right with you, God. All the distractions, all the things that we carry in, God, that we would throw them away, God, that we would lay them aside and we would seek after you with our whole heart, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we need you in this place. We need more of your presence, more of your peace in this place for these people, God. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you would bring a new anointing into this place, God. A new level of your spirit, God. Your Holy Spirit move in this place, Jesus. That we would be filled up with you. That we would be changed, God. That we would not be lead the same that we have been before, God. Jesus, we need you. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust in God. My Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Yes, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Thank you, Jesus. rushing wind fire of god fall within holy ghost breathe on us we pray as we repent and turn from sin revival embers smoldering oh breath of god fan us into we need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. holy fear purified in faith and deed refiners fire strengthen what remains so we the church who bear your light lamp of flame city bright O king and kingdom come is what we pray we need a friend wind, the fragrance of heaven, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, a holy anointing, the power of your presence, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. 
redeemed, prophesy and sing. We can hear the wind blowing, 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 move upon our praise. Sons and daughters sing. We can hear the wind blowing, blowing, blowing. Let all the redeemed, come on church, prophesy and sing. We can hear the wind blowing, 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 move upon our praise. Sons and daughters sing. We can hear the wind blowing, blowing. Oh, we need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. A holy anointing, the power of your presence. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. One more time. Oh, we need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven. Lord, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, a holy anointing, the power of your presence, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. talked about peace last week and there's peace in his presence just being in his presence just a moment i'm going to ask you to sit down we're going to continue to worship the lord we're going to take communion together this morning so the ushers if you guys want to get ready for that that would be great Today I get to talk about patience in a little bit we're going to talk about. And t- patience often deals with how we view time, right? How we deal with time. I wonder how many earthly millions of years it's going to take for me just to finally realize in heaven, hey, I get to see Jesus face to face and get over that fact that there's going to come a day where we get to see Jesus face to face. We get to worship and we get to sit at his feet. We get to, we'll have things to do. Revelation talks about all that stuff, but just being in God's presence is going to be so powerful and being able to fully be alive because there's days right as long to just be in heaven, to be with him forever, just to not be bogged down by the things of this world. And as you're seated this morning, you guys can go ahead and sit down. As you're seated, as you're thinking about this, as we walk into a time of communion, this is a reflective time to say, Holy Spirit, what in my life do I need to realign with what your word says, with what God's word teaches us and speaks to us. Communion's a great time to remember the why. The why of what we do, the why of why this church exists, the why of why the church, capital C, exists. To bring hope, to bring truth, to bring life, to change people with the gospel, and ultimately to get to be together with our Savior in heaven. And so, gentlemen, go ahead and come forward this morning and At our church, we practice what is uh, called open communion, meaning that you don't have to be an official member. Um, They probably collected your dues at the door to make sure that you had to pay so you could eat communion today. That's no. I don't do that here, right? Uh, If you're a believer, if you're a follower of Jesus, you're a professing follower of Christ, you get to celebrate in this together. 
and I say this every time we do it, we keep kids in here with parents on purpose before we dismiss them for our kids' ministry because it's important that kids learn the value of this and, and kids understand. So mom and dad, if your children are with you and they understand why we're doing this, that it's not a snack, but the why we're doing this, let them do it. Let them do it. And it's been fun to talk to a few of you over the last few months because I've challenged you that, guess what? Typically in AG churches, we do communion once a month. Nothing wrong with that. It's just what we do. But you should and can do communion on your own. You should do it as a married couple. You should do it as a family. You should do it, uh, maybe you have just a prayer meeting at your house and you, do it, you can do it anytime. It's remembering the Lord's death. And so gentlemen, go ahead and distribute those elements. Appreciate that. I'll even grab one for my wife. Randy, I'll save you a trip up the stairs. <laughs> but this is, a, this is a special moment. So please hold on to the elements. We'll, we will take these together. But say, Holy Spirit, what in my heart needs to be searched? What in my heart needs to be addressed? Is there anything from you that, that doesn't please you, that needs to be taken care of? The Word even challenges us that if you have someone you have to go and apologize to, go take care of it. Don't take communion. If you're in a spot where you can't take communion, don't take it. It's no judgment. I'd rather you be right with the Lord. But take these moments and reflect and be in his presence. To be loved is to be loved by you. To be loved is to be loved by you. To be loved is to be loved by you. To be loved is to be loved by you. So I won't worry about tomorrow. It's all I do all I want to do is know you so I won't worry about tomorrow because all I want to do all I want to do is know you I want to be next to you I want to be one with your speed Teach me to abide in you, to hear your voice all around me, your voice all around me. Just abiding, there's no striving in you. There's no striving, just abiding, there's no striving in you. There's no striving, just abiding. There's no striving in you. There's no striving, just abiding. There's no striving in you. There's no striving, just abiding. There's no striving.
want to be one with your spirit teach me to abide in you to hear your voice all around me your voice all around me make sure everybody's been served before I read the, the passage from Paul here in 1 Corinthians. If you've been missed, please raise your hand. Great. We often read this when we take communion together, when the church takes communion together. Paul writes this and gives the Corinthian church who needed some direction. We went through a study in Corinthians a little while back here. They need some help. So this is how you should be remembering and celebrating the Lord's Supper. Verse 23, it says, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. Paul was given this instruction from the Holy Spirit, from Jesus himself, saying, Do this. This is what you should do. Uh, he said, On the night that Jesus was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread, and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces, and he said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant. Say new. New. Brand new. And it never happened. It, Jesus came to change the old system, right? A way that was, was temporary and worked at the moment, but God, Jesus came and made, and made a brand new covenant, a brand new agreement, saying, this is how it's going to be from now on between me and you. He made that covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with Jesus' blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you're announcing the Lord's death until he comes. The greatest thing we could ever talk about is salvation. The greatest gift ever given was salvation through Jesus upon the cross. So every time we come together and we do this, we're proclaiming, we're telling, we're celebrating. Jesus is alive. Jesus conquered death. Jesus conquered sin. You and I have freedom. So that's what we're doing. We're proclaiming when we drink this juice and eat this cracker, we're proclaiming, Jesus, you did it. Come on that everything that you promised, that new covenant is in agreement and we can walk in that today. And so Lord, as we hold these elements, God, these symbols of your blood and your body that were beaten, your blood that flowed, I pray God that you would, Jesus, you'd be glorified. Be glorified in my life, be glorified in each life in this room today, those that are maybe doing their own communion with us online right now, God, be glorified. We celebrate, we remember the cost we don't fully understand it, but we remember the cost on the cross of what, it, what you came and you did, Jesus, and we say thank you. And we say we love you. And Lord, I pray today that as part of that death on the cross, the part of that atonement is healing. And so Lord, as we take communion today, God, if there's people that need physical healing, a spiritual healing, emotional, God, that you would reach into their life today, that there would be a supernatural act that follows a natural action when we, t when we take this cracker and juice. Bring healing in Jesus' name, Lord. And we do look forward to standing before you. Each and, uh, each and every one of us are going to give an account for our life, Lord. And I look forward to being able to stand before you, God, knowing that I didn't earn my way there. I wasn't good enough. But because of Jesus' death, his sacrifice, his resurrection, I get to be there because of what you did, Jesus. And I will lay anything good and perfect on, in my life, which is from you, but I'll get to lay it at your feet. We'll get to lay it at your feet and we'll get to celebrate with you at the marriage supper of the Lamb. So Lord, bless these, these elements as we remember, as we celebrate. God, and do the work that, that communion does in our, in our spirit. And Lord, there's a unity happening in this moment right now. So we welcome you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's partake of the cracker. When you're ready, you can partake of the juice as well. Amen. Amen. Hmm. I love getting to do communion together. It's one of my favorite things we get to do as the church. So 
can hold on to your cups. We'll collect all of those later. You don't have to worry about that right now, but please toss them out. Thank you, Jolene, for leading us. Jolene, I don't know if I've ever heard that song before. Have you ever played that song before? Did you write that song? No. I was like, man, that was quick. You another one you didn't tell me, but my wife writes songs occasionally. I was like, I missed that one. So uh, thank you, Jolene, and thank you, the worship team, for, for helping. We're going to invite our ushers forward uh, back up this morning. We're going to receive uh, and, and give together in our offering this morning. I want to thank you for your faithful giving. Uh, we use what is called the Givelify app here at church. If you want to give online, there's a few different ways to give. Uh, go to the Givelify app or go to givelify.com, search Hope Community. You'll see our logo. Make sure you choose the Buffalo uh, spot, and you can give that way. You can give in our offering here. Um, one thing, I, we don't talk about this a lot, uh, but some of you, we have no problem with people giving online, but just in case you guys don't know this, um, giving online takes 3.2% off of every gift online. Some people do direct deposit. There's a way you can do that too. I don't say that just like, hey, come on, but like some people don't know that. I'm not good. I don't say it often, but I just want to let you know if you want to say, hey, I want to set up direct deposit so it all goes what I'm given, awesome, you can do that. So, uh, But thanks for your faithful giving. I want to give you an update. We've been letting you know about our boiler uh, fundraiser over the summer. We have a, a boiler that could be my dad. Uh, it's that old, and so we need to replace that boiler, uh, and that's the, the dream. These two gentlemen right here are, are our faithful boiler attendees through the, through the winter months, making sure it's running and keeping us safe. So, But hey, here's an update. Uh, here's where we're at. We have a $75,000 goal to replace our boiler. That is phase number one. Okay, and then phase two would be to add some more heating in our in our basement But phase one is getting the boiler replaced and done it needs to happen. We had a great great week last week We had a ten thousand seven hundred and twenty dollar offering towards our boiler uh, last week. Yeah, we can celebrate that So that puts us at nineteen thousand nine hundred seventy eight dollars towards our goal. So which is awesome We're getting there. We're over the quarter mark. Uh, I'm excited for that And uh, so today you have an opportunity on top of your tithes different. This is an offering where the Holy Spirit says, hey, give to this. You're supposed to help this out. Our tithes go directly to the church. We use it to reach our kingdom builders and minister and, and do what we need to do, but uh, keep being obedient. Uh, as, as things come in, there's still a continued uh, 10% match of what comes in each week. I'm going to go ahead and just put mine in now quick case uh, you guys forget me because I get forgetting often because I'm very easy to miss. Uh, but hey, I do want to say thanks for giving today and thanks for being faithful. And it, it's so fun to watch what God is doing, um, what God is reaching and, and, and connecting and how we're loving our community and loving people. So that's what we're giving towards today. Today we're going to be praying for every week. We pray for different groups. Pray for Connection Point today. Uh, Pastor Justin Petrali, uh, they just bought a building. And so we're excited for their, them and their church. And uh, we're going to pray for the Buffalo Police Department. And then Caleb and Brittany Monson, who are one of our Kingdom Builders partners uh, that does anti-human trafficking ministry. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you that we get to give together today. Lord God, um, man, you're such a fun God in that you take something that is average or natural, and then when, when we give it to you, submit it to you, God, you transform it into something powerful and supernatural and eternal. Um, giving is that. It's a releasing of saying, God, I trust you that you're my provider. And when we give, Lord, you take that, those funds, those giving, Lord, and you reach people and you transform cultures and you bring the gospel to places that have never heard the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, as we give obediently today in the offering, God, we pray that you would bless it and multiply it. Thank you for what's happening so far in our boiler fundraiser. Keep building that, that total. Uh, excited to report about next week as well, too. It's, uh, God, you're, you're doing it. We give you the glory. Lord, today we lift up Connection Point and Pastor Justin and Tara and Petrali and their family. Thank you for providing a building for them, God. That has been a prayer for them, and they are excited to keep moving forward to reach uh, Buffalo and share the gospel to the surrounding area. God, bless them. Bless that church today and uh, what you're doing. Lord, I pray, God, for the Buffalo Police Department. Lord, I thank you uh, for those men and women that serve, that sacrifice, and put their lives on the line to serve our community. So, Lord, protect them, bless them. We as a church want them to know we care for them, we support them. God, I look forward to bringing them ice cream here in the next few weeks that our church does every year. Uh, Lord, let them know that they are prayed for and cared for in our community. Lord, we lift up Caleb and Brittany Monson. Lord, I thank you for Operation for Freedom and the, the many people, many people that are rescued out of human trafficking, uh, Lord, out of sex trafficking, God, that you would keep rescuing the lost, Lord, and not just get them out of that lifestyle, but Jesus, transform their hearts. 
in their souls and let them come to faith in you and find a new way, a new story uh, in their life. God bless Caleb and Brittany. We look forward as a church to working with them and partnering with them in the fall on our, our fall uh, Vegas Kingdom Builders trip, God, in November. Lord, keep ordering uh, opportunities for people to be set free. Bless this offering now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Hey, man, he must have got a little bit of a nap, but our illustrious youth director, Alex, is back from camp, so he's going to come and share a little bit with you and uh, give you our announcements this morning. So welcome, Alex, if you would. Hey, uh, so as Sam said, my name is Alex. I'm the youth director here, and uh, I just want to say welcome. Welcome to church. We're so happy that all of you are here and all, all of you that are watching online, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you're new here, you can scan the QR code behind me, or, so you can scan that, or right in front of you, there should be a connection card where you can fill out, and it's the same thing. And if you're new, fill it out, or if you haven't filled it out, I just kind of realized it took me about a few months after I was on staff that I realized I didn't fill it out to one service. I even filled it out, even though I was on staff, but if you haven't filled it out, fill it out, or if you're new, We'd love to have you fill it out. And if you do fill that out, you get a free gift. You can find Sam or myself afterwards, and we can give you just some goodies, some a little treat, I guess. But uh, yes, kind of, kind of, uh, kind of transition, transitioning into what I did this past week. What I did this past week, I was the uh, camp counselor for our junior team uh, students. So we had seven students from uh, this church go. And it was great. We had so much fun. Like Sam said, we got some sleep, but that's a given because middle school kids, they're just awesome. But uh, <laughs> yes, uh, this, the, this past week was so much fun. But we went to have fun, but also we went, we went to experience God. And I can say I asked every student individually, and everybody said they had a powerful moment with God. And so the week was a success, you could say, and it was great. Uh, highlight of the week was one night they had like a healing service where they would just pray for students. If you had like a healing need, students would raise their hands and some of our students raised their hands and people just laid hands on them and just prayed for them and three of our students got healed, which was unbelievable, which was so good. Uh, yeah, so it was, it was a great week. If you see any of our middle school students in here, you can ask them about kind of what God did in their life because everybody does have a story and it was just a great week and in two weeks we're going with our senior teen students so like high school age students uh, we have another group going so pray for us then and pray for this week there's more churches going this week so for four weeks in a row there's thousands of students going to Lake Geneva so pray for the students because God God moves at that camp uh, he's moved in my life he's moved in Sam's life he's moved in a bunch of our lives and Lake Geneva is amazing, so just pray for the students that they will just experience God and just encounter, encounter God, because I know they have been encountering God, and I know they will. So just continue to pray for us, because it's going to be great. Uh, next kind of live announcements, uh, serve teams. So if you're a volunteer, kind of July, we kind of do, like if you want to serve for another year, you can like just tell us or sign up, uh, and you can volunteer, or if you aren't volunteer anywhere, we'd love to have you get connected to some team. So if you have any questions, talk to Sam or myself, or you can sign up on the welcome table out there. You can kind of figure out what teams we have, where you can serve, what you can do, because, yeah. Uh, next Sunday, it will be Jerry and Peggy's last Sunday, unfortunately, but we'll be praying for you, and it'll be, it'll be great. So next week, uh, it'll be the, their last Sunday, so yeah, we're just so thankful for just the investment you've put in the kids uh, throughout the years, and you've done amazing, and we're just so proud of you, and yeah, we can clap for them, yeah. But yes, kind of this next season in life, we'll, we'll pray for you, but yes, so next Sunday it will be, yes, next Sunday will be their last Sunday. Uh, so yes, uh, Kingdom Builders Mission Trip will be uh, next Sunday. A lot is happening next Sunday, I guess. But next Sunday there will be an informational meeting after service where uh, there will just be some kind of, not facts, information. That's information. That's the word I was looking for. 
Uh, information, there'll be some information if you have questions, and yes, if you have any questions, you can talk to Marla or Hannah about it, and they have all the answers. So any questions, let them know, because they have all the answers. Uh, then July 28th, so not next Sunday, but the Sunday after, is Water Baptism Sunday. So we'll have a celebration during service, and then afterwards we'll go to uh, the Pedigs, and yes, she just raised her hand. Uh, but we'll go to their house, and we'll baptize people there. If you have any questions, again, talk to Sam, because Sam has all the answers, if you guys didn't know that. But Sam has all the answers, and you can sign up on a welcome table. And yes, yeah, so that'll be in two Sundays. And August growth groups uh, throughout August on Wednesday nights will meet just with growth groups, so sign up for some. And yes, I forgot this. Water Baptism Sunday, bring a treat, bring a snack, bring some food. Forgot about that. Yes, there we go. Uh, and then the last, last but not least, the night to, whoa, night to unite block party will be August 6th from 5.30 to 8. Uh, it's kind of just an event where we just kind of bless the city. Uh, and last year it was great. We had a bunch of people show up. And this year, we'll see if we have a bunch of people show up. But we're excited. If you're interested in volunteering, then you can sign up on the welcome table. A lot is on the welcome table. Go out there if you have any questions. There'll be some information and stuff. But yes, so sign up to volunteer there because we still need some slots filled. And yes, give it up for Sam. Love it, love it. Come on, Alex. Great job. Thank you, buddy. I'm going to give a caveat. Even if you're not interested in helping at the block party, sign up. I don't care if you're interested. We need you to be interested because uh, we want to bless our community. This is a fun event. Inflatables, face painting, kids crafts, free food, giveaways. Uh, it's, it's the national night out. If you, I don't know why I put that in quotations like it was a fake thing. Uh, it, it, it's a really big deal. This is one of our big outreach events every summer that we do here. We need your help to make this happen. So sign up, be a part of it. Thank you very much, Alex, for loving on that. And uh, man, for them of you who are like, wait, Jerry and Peggy are leaving? Uh, that was the announcements for you. Yes, the Lord has called them on to move to North Dakota uh, because people in North Dakota need Jesus too. Uh, but, uh, but we know the Lord's spoken to them. We're so thankful for them. But uh, we're going to pray over them next week. And you have an opportunity. Uh, if you want to, bring a card, bring a word, uh, bring an encouraging a memory for them. But um, yeah, just we'll keep praying. You guys are still part of us. That doesn't change, but it's it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a tough Sunday. So we we love them so very much. So hey, kiddos, why don't you guys stand up? We're gonna dismiss our elementary age kids. You guys are gonna head down to your kids' church. Uh, they're still learning about the life of Joseph. Uh, Michael and Janie and your team head on down there. Uh, lots of fun. Love seeing kids here. Uh, please, please, please get signed up for baptism. That would be great. I don't know. Uh, that would be awesome. So. So good. So good. Give it up for our kiddos as they slowly saunter out of here. Some run, some take their time, which is perfect because it matches what I'm preaching. Guys, sometimes as a pastor, this is like free counseling up here. Uh, I get just to share my stuff up here and all these things, and it can be very cathartic at times uh, to get to do this. So I have another confession to make this morning as I open. I have a disease. I don't, yes, I do love Jesus, but that's a good disease to have. Uh, I, I don't know the technical name for it. I know my wife does not have it. I know so far my children have not shown any symptoms of it. Uh, but this disease shows itself this way in my life often. Whether I'm driving, whether I'm at the store, whether I'm anywhere, the DMV, a place where there's a line, I'm that guy who's always scanning going, where's my line? What line am I going to go to? What line's going to be the fastest? What line's going to go the quickest? What line's going to get me out of here in this thing that I don't really want to do to get me to the spot to be able to go do what I want to do? And so I look and I look and I scan. I go, boom, there it is. And I pick that line and I get in that line or if I'm driving, I cut that guy off in front of me because that was my spot, you know, whatever it may be, right? Inevitably, what ends up happening to Pastor Sam in these lines? I pick the slowest one possible, right? It's like this person's like, they, for their whole life, they've been fully functional. They can pull out a wallet and pull out a card or get cash, but some of them are like, I don't know where my wallet is. I don't know how, how does this chip reader work? How does it like, and it takes forever to get through it. Or no, this is, this is no judgment. I'll always get the person that always handwrites a check. 
right? So they take the checkbook out, and it takes nine days to write, like, and you're just waiting, and like, or, or the sickness is really bad. Uh, I did this on Monday night. I was at Costco Monday night, and I'm like, there it is, and I go, Gah! you know, I'm just waiting for this line to go faster. Uh, if I'm driving, we're driving, we're on vacation, or we're going somewhere, whether I know where I'm at or not, I get into a traffic jam. The worst thing ever for me is to stop moving. So I'll be like, let's find another way and let's go drive around. And like, you know, you're moving and like I'm two hours out of my way, but I moved, you know, I didn't get stuck in traffic, right? Uh, please, God, let me not be the only one. Who else shares my disease? All right, thank you. I'm not alone here this morning. Uh, uh, I told you I didn't have a name for it. I technically do. It's called impatience, right? It's called impatience. Uh, it's something that, that I honestly do struggle with. Uh, of all the nine fruit of the Spirit, we're walking through a series called The Summer of Serve and how the Holy Spirit empowers us to serve and to live out our faith and to be like Him and just what each of these fruit look like in our lives. Uh, of all the fruit of the Spirit, I wish I had the, it was foolishness, but I wish I had the guts of Thomas Jefferson to take my Bible and cut out certain parts of it that I didn't like. If you didn't know that, Thomas Jefferson had an edited Bible. He'd take out verses he didn't like. Uh, and so if I could, I w we would only have eight fruit of the Spirit. You know, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, Good, you know, I'd jump over that. Uh, but guess what? It's in there. God doesn't care about my feelings. He cares about making me more like him. And so this morning, maybe you, you don't struggle at all with, with patience. Maybe that's not you. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm not the most patient person in the world, but it's not an issue for me. Then you know what you can do? You're better than me. You can just pray for me while I'm preaching today. Uh, but for those of us who maybe struggle with patience this morning, we're going to look at what the Word of God says and how we can live out this fruit of the Spirit and how we can be who God wants us to be. So once again, uh, we read it every week. It's our main passage, Galatians chapter 5. If you have your Bibles, go to Galatians 5. We're going to read verses 22 and 23. Uh, it will be on the screen behind me. You're welcome to use that as well. I do encourage you to bring your Bibles every week. It's a good thing, good habit to get into. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit, uh, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. So Paul's writing here, and, and again, I, I, I'm hoping each week to give you the original intent of what Paul is trying to communicate to the church here in Galatia. Uh, this word patience, I won't give you the Greek word because nobody cares, and it just makes me act like I sound cooler if I can say a Greek word. But here's what it means. That's what we should know, right? Uh, the Greek word means this. F the patience means forbearance. What an old school word, right? forbearance. So I had, to, I had to look up the definition of a definition word, because uh, I don't know a lot of people that use the word forbearance anymore. But here's what that word means. It means refraining from the enforcement of your rights. Sounds like that's a word our culture, the people on social media that we interact with could use that word. So patience here, Paul's saying that, that people, uh, the spirit, when, when the spirit is working in us and moving in us and, and, and changing us, he helps us Refrain from in the enforcement of what our rights potentially are. Uh, patience means long-suffering. Man, we're making a cat poster right now, aren't we? So encouraging. Patience means slowness in avenging wrongs. That's what Paul's trying to tell the people. That there's, this, there's this teaching, this principle of what this means. So there's a few things uh, that patience uh, we can get from the Word of God this morning as we look at what patience means in our lives. Number one this morning, God's character is patience. God's character is patience. The fruit of the spirit aren't uh, the fruit of the spirit are not just I wrote here are not just for humans to be better humans. It's meant to make us more like God, to be to live out his character of who he is. The fruit of the spirit are supposed to m help make us look and be and act and live more like Jesus. Because that is who God is. God is love, right? So we should love God is joy, so we should be joyous, right? God is peace. He wants us to be more like him. God's character is patience. Look at the Bible. If you read the Bible, you read it. Let's go to the end first, Revelation. Revelation is a weird book. Lots of weird allegory and, and literal and all these in-between visions and what's this mean, what's that sign mean, what's that symbol? 
All in all, Revelation is a love letter of God's patience with humanity. He sends judgment. God's going to judge. That's part of his character as well. But he's patient with people to turn back to him. He's saying, trust me. Come to me. Don't follow that way. Don't go the way of the the world. Come to me. Come to me. Revelation is God's patience to the point where he says, I'll be patient to you, with you, and I am. That's who I am. But there is a point where you have to ultimately answer. There will be judgment. There will be a finality of of time ends too, right? So the next time you read Revelation, which I encourage you to not avoid it because it's hard to read and because it's hard to understand, read it because it's a letter of God's patience saying, I want all of humanity to know me. That's one example. Jump all the way back to the book of Exodus. If you've ever read the book of Exodus, it's a powerful story of God uh, delivering the people of Israel out of slavery and captivity, and Moses uh, is leading the people, and God is doing miraculous things, and uh, before they leave, God sends 10 plagues on the nation of Israel, right? If you know the story in Exodus, God is trying to get Pharaoh to say, hey, let my people go. Let them come worship me. Release them back so they can go into the promised land that I promised Abraham that I was going to give them. So God sends how many plagues? Ten. Took ten plagues, right? What if God led with plague one, boom, firstborn or dead? Super heavy-handed in his rights, but that would have worked probably. Pharaoh would have been like, all right, get out of here, right? It would have worked, I think, but God was patient and, and it's a command. Patience isn't a choice, it's a command. There's a lot of things that are choice. I love choices. I love that we live in America, a place of multiple choices. I remember uh, when those pop machines came out. Don't judge me, all you health awesome people. Uh, I like pop. I drink water, but I like pop too. But I remember those soda machines that came out and they had like all the sodas on the screen. It wasn't like, you know, this is a Coke place, this is a Pepsi place. Like it had them all as a touch screen, right? And then, so there's like 30 options. And then you clicked, I want, you know, Diet Dr. Zero Pepper, Dr. Pepper. So you click on that and there's like seven flavors you can put in it. You're like, come on. That's what this is about. This is America. This is why I live here right now. I love choices. I love variety. We went to Costco on Monday with my, with my kids. We had to do a, a church run and stuff for our house. And uh, because I'm a wise dad, uh, I dropped my wife and my two daughters off at Hobby Lobby. Uh, maybe not wise financially, but wise for peace in my own life because I preached about peace the week earlier. Uh, but for a moment, I had to go to Sam's Club. I dropped them off at Hobby Lobby. Jul- or, uh, Eliana wanted to go shopping there. And I went shopping, did my thing at Sam's Club, and I came back, and Jalene, you know, I went to meet him in there and pick him up, and Jalene's like, Annalie walked in, she looked around, if you ever, some of you are like, Hobby Lobby's not my thing, but for you, those of you who love Hobby Lobby, you, and you just look, yeah, I'm glad that got the first clap of the day, thank you very much, um, no, that's good, thank you, Galen, um, but, but she just looked around, and she's like, this place is awesome. She was so fired up, my little eight-year-old girl. And because there's so many choices, and then it overwhelmed her, and then she got mad because she couldn't get everything. But, but choices are a good thing. God gives us choices. Choosing to serve him and give our lives to Jesus is a choice. Jesus offers and gives us salvation, and we get to choose that. That's a powerful thing. Right? That's a choice. And that's a choice every one of us has to choose to make. Will we choose and submit our life to Christ and live for him? But then I wrote this down, and I, I want to highlight this. I don't even be on the screen. But listen, once we choose Jesus, there are choices that aren't choices anymore. Right? If you've been serving Jesus long enough, you know there are choices that aren't choices anymore, which, which, which tells us patience isn't a choice. It is a command. God isn't telling the Galatians here, hey, if it works out for you and you want to be patient when, it, when, it, when it's on your time schedule, okay? Just, you guys, you'll work on that patience thing. God's saying, no, the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is patience. You are called to be patient the way, because I am patient. Live this out. Do this. Be this. Colossians chapter 3, verses 13 through 15. 13 through 15. Uh, I've never read from this translation before, but I liked how they said it. It's called the Worldwide English Translation, so it's a new one. Uh, here's what it says says, be patient with one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, forgive that one. Christ forgave you. 
so you should forgive each other. Beside all these, you must love. This joins everything together as it should be. Hold on to the peace of God, which is in your hearts. You are called to have peace because you are all like uh, one body. Be thankful. Man, I like that. Be patient with each other. Guys, can I be honest with you? Some of you get on my nerves sometimes. Guys, can, can you be honest with me? Sometimes I get on your nerves sometimes. <laughs> I got a second clap. Oh, man. That would not happen in a lot of churches, but I love our church. That's a good thing. So, but it's true, right? So we have to be patient with each other. We have to. We're called to. Because it, it isn't a choice. It's a command. Because we're called to live it out. There's, a, there's an old Hebrew story that, that rabbis would tell uh, and teach people about this concept of patience. The story goes like this, that Abraham one day was out in a field and this old, older gentleman comes and he could tell he'd been traveling and so he welcomes him into, into his tent and he asks the gentleman to sit down and he washes his feet and he prepares some food for him and, and he feeds him. So they're sitting there and right away, this guy, who, who this, this older gentleman who's welcomed into, into Abraham's tent just starts eating. Just starts eating the food. He's been, it's been a long journey. He's tired. Uh, Abraham looks at him and he says, wait, wait, wait a minute. You didn't pray or say a blessing for this food. What, do, do you not worship God? And the older man says, no, I only worship fire and nothing else. And he kept eating. Abraham got ticked, story goes. He picks this guy up and he picks him up and he gets his stuff and he tosses him out into the night where it's cold, and he says, get out of here. We don't have time for that. We worship God here. There's only one God to serve. And he kicks him out. So the older gentleman leaves on his way and begins to, to go wherever next. And as, after he had been gone for a little bit, the Lord comes to Abraham. He says, Abraham, where is the older gentleman that was in your tent with you? Abraham said, God, he did not worship you. He did not pray to you. He did not serve you like we do. So I kicked him out. I got rid of him. God says to Abraham this in the story. He says, I have put up with him. I have dealt with him. I have lived with him for 80 years, although he dishonors me. And you couldn't even handle one night. Hmm. Patience is a command. We are called to be patience, patient with each other. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I wasn't even in my notes because obviously it happened yesterday. How we respond to what's happening in our culture politically matters. You are a citizen of heaven before anything else. And there are people on whatever side who have said or are going to say really stupid and sometimes evil things and things that I disagree with. There's lots of people I disagree with. But how we respond as the church matters. How we respond as followers of Jesus matters. Don't you dare let your, your preferences or affiliations supersede anything when it comes to the, the, to the kingdom of God. We have an opportunity. This, it's election season. We're going to be having a ton of stupid commercials coming up pretty soon, right? Man, it's going it's to fill the air. And you better pray. And you better pray for godly elections. I pray for godly leaders. Vote. I'm all for that. Please vote. I'm not anti-government. I'm pro-Jesus. As my hope and my direction and, and the real answer for my life. But, but let's not push people away in this election season because of the way our preferences and things that, that maybe aren't eternal compared to what God is saying in his word. Does that make sense? You catch my heart in this? You hear what I'm saying? And I, I love a good political discourse. I love good discussions. I'm excited. I signed up this week to be an election judge. I thought, that'd be a cool way to be, be out in the community. Obviously, you're not pro or for anybody when you're an election judge, but I thought that'd be a fun thing. I'm going to be voting. I'm going to be part of this. It's going to be cool. So, guys, patience isn't a choice. It's a command. And then lastly, number three. Patience releases control. Patience releases 
control. When we stop and obey the command to be like our Lord and live in patience, we acknowledge the fact that we don't have it all. We can't control it all. We shouldn't control it all. That's not what we're called to do. Psalms chapter 37, verses 7 through 9 says this. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. I think that matches what I just said a little bit ago. Verse 8, stop being angry. Whew. Stop being, Alex, you're the most ticked off person. Not really. Uh, not even close. Stop being angry. Turn from your rage. Do not lose your temper. It only leads to harm. Verse 9, for the wicked will be destroyed, but those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. Guys, be patient. Trust the Lord. When we're patient, it releases control. When I'm impatient, when I'm ready, I'm like, ah, I try to control everything because I, I know I use this illustration a lot, but it's very symbolic of our walk with, with, in our life. We either live like this or we live like this as people. Release control. Impatient at its purest form, in its purest sense, is pride and arrogance and telling God I know best. It's what it is. It's selfishness, really. How many times do we tell our kids, not yet, wait. And they get ticked off. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Can I have it yet? Is it time? Is it time? Is it time? It's like, stop! Please, Jesus. It's hard, but we do that with God all the time. You and I do that with, all, with God all, all the time. I was at a prayer and fasting day with our central section, and um, Pastor Denny Curran, who, who just recently retired, he ministered many, many years, great years in, in Cold Spring, Minnesota. He said this quote, and I wrote it down, and it stuck with me. It says, God is usually late, but he's always on time. He said, and I was like, wait, oh, yeah, I like that. God is usually late for me, but he's always on time. Amen, right? That's a, good, that's a good quote. Put that in your back pocket. The Lord is so often so much later than I want him to be, but as I've looked back and seen him in my life, then God, you've been there the whole time and you were exactly when I needed you the most. And you did exactly what you said you would do. John Mark Comer is a, is a pastor and an author on the, on the West Coast and he wrote a book called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. It's a really good book. I encourage you to read it. He challenges himself not to be this person who hurries all the time and gets so rushed and we miss so many things of God when we rush and we're impatient. So he's like really weird and he'll like purposely choose the longest line when he's out. I'm like, you're weird, dude. But he wrote this in his book. There's times when he, he, he will walk even though he could drive. There's times when he just stops and waits when, he, when most of the culture say, hurry up and go, right? But he wrote this quote or he said this quote in his book, in that book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, he said, hurry is a subtle form of self-importance, as if our time is more valuable than anyone's else. Anyone else. Anyone's else. Anyone else's. I'll get it out yet. Sorry. Let me read that again. That was rough. Hurry is a subtle form of self-importance, as if our time is more valuable than anyone else's. Ouch. That's tough. I'm a, I'm a, I've already confessed it. This, this is hard for me. I'm a hurried person. I'm a really hurried person. Part of that's natural. Part of that's unnatural. Part of it's driven to try to do the best I can for the Lord. Part of it's unbiblical because I'm trying to perform and make God like me better. And thinking if I do more, say more, be more, then I'll be more for God. It's unhealthy. It's wrong. Right? When we learn to walk and live in patience, it says, God, I trust your plan and your pace, and you know exactly what I need. For an example or an illustration, I, I, I wrote down the challenge. You want, you want to work on releasing control in your life? Go for a walk with a toddler. Get a three-year-old. Say, hey, right now, let's use this space for an example. Let's go to... Uh, What's the scoop for ice cream? We're going to go for ice cream. Would you like to go, buddy? Yeah! For those who don't know, go to the end of this block, go down one block, go down two blocks, and you're basically there. Most normal people. Normal. Five minutes, right? We could probably walk four blocks in about five minutes, maybe, maybe ten tops. 
but say, hey, I, God, I want to release control to you. I'm going to take this beautiful little toddler that's my niece or nephew or my son or daughter or my grandkids, and you start walking, right? And you just start walking down just the street, just down towards the corner, towards the church we own in the corner too, and wait, oh, there's a bug. Oh, man, that bug's awesome. Oh, look at I wonder how many legs does it have? Oh, man, could you eat that? I'm going to try to eat. Don't eat the bug. Take a couple more steps. There's a leaf. There's a leaf in it. There's a feather floating in the wind. Where's it going? Where's it going? Where's it going? And they're, now they're walking back towards the school. Any other? No, we're over here. Okay, okay, I'll focus. Take a couple more steps. Oh, I'm really tired. I'm so tired. Can we just stop and wait, Grandpa? Dad, can we stop? And you've walked a half a block. <laughs> I'm being a little dramatic, obviously, but... but you want to release control, walk in, toddlers don't care about time. They care about, the, in a way, the moment. They're selfish, of course, but, but, but they teach us about patience. And how often do we do this with God? Because we're right here in our walk with God, and we're in this moment, and we know we want to be right there, and we're like, God, I just want to get right there. God, this is what I want to do. I want to get right here. Whew, I'm there. I'm there. I got what I wanted in this moment. And then we get discontent in that moment and we try to go to another moment, right? But here's what often so happens is, is we, even feel, we even feel God saying, you're in this spot, and God is saying, I want you to go over there. And my natural inclination is a straight line. But sometimes God will go, I'm walking, and God will say, no, no, stop over here. Come talk to this person about this. I want you to learn this. And like, God, I want to go. He's like, no, 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 stay right here. So you take a couple more steps. He's like, oh, you need to go over here. You need to come down here. God. And you're, God wants to teach you something in this spot. God, I want to get over there. We're supposed to get over there. God, why am I not there yet? God's like, D -d -d I'll get you there. Calm down, buddy. <laughs> and then you walk, and, and, and we have this journey, and I'm, God is very process-oriented. We talked about this last night in the teaching on the Holy Spirit. But we're impatient. We're impatient. We want to get there when God is saying, trust my timing. Trust me. Walk in what I have for you. So the question this morning as we get ready to close in a moment here is what do you need to release today? What kind of control do you think you have that you really don't have? What do you need to con release control to the Lord today? It's probably something that we all could possible. This morning our response is really to saying, Holy Spirit, take me on a walk with you. Holy Spirit, take me to the next steps, the step you want me to take. Holy Spirit, help me release control. Help me to, to obey and be patient even though I don't want to. I'm going to be patient even though it doesn't feel good and it's frustrating. Here's our response time this morning. Sometimes we sing a song, sometimes we pray, sometimes we, often we pray. I do this well sometimes, but our response time, I, I really felt this morning, we're just going to sit in silence for a little bit. And we're just going to breathe and we're going to be in God's presence and you're going to say, Holy Spirit, I'm in this moment with you. Holy Spirit, help me to walk in patience where I need it. And don't talk a lot, but I just want you to sit in his presence and, and uh, there's power in silence. I agree with that theologically and pragmatically. I don't live it out very often but I think it's really good. So we're just going to take a moment. We're just going to sit in God's, sit or stand, whatever you're comfortable with. And in that context, if you're here today and God begins speaking to you, begins drawing you, maybe you're, you're, you're in a spot where Jesus isn't your foundation, Jesus isn't the Lord of your life, and the Holy Spirit's really gonna, he's going to begin to draw you and say, hey, you need to be saved. You need to get back on track with me. You're not living for me. I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray about that in a little bit.
But for all of us, whether you're doing great at patience or you're doing really rough, let's just be in this moment. So Holy Spirit, I I thank you for your word. I thank you that you put patience in one of your fruits. Lord, I don't always like it, but I thank you for it. So Holy Spirit, we're going to take a moment and just be quiet before you. Maybe this is our first step to slowing down where we need to slow down. I pray for people to just sense your peace, to sense your presence. Lord, for those that are learning to hear your voice, I pray they begin to, to sense your, your, you speaking and maybe writing down what, you, what they think you're saying. But above all, Lord, I just want you to be here and to be present and to be in and around us. So you're welcome here in this moment, Holy Spirit, to meet us exactly how you want to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. For some of you, that was the most spiritual thing you've done all week. Some of you are mad at me that I'm already talking. Some of you are frustrated that I waited as long as I did to talk. If you haven't taken the spiritual discipline of solitude and silence, it's a really powerful element to add to your spiritual walk with the Lord. Sometimes the best things I can do is just sitting quiet with God. So take what maybe God started, what Holy Spirit started in this moment, and take and go with that this week, right? Add that to your walk with Him. Add that to those moments. When you sense yourself getting hurried, you can feel it inside of you. I, I know how I operate. I can feel it. Sometimes my kids will call me out on it. My wife will call me out on it. And I need to hear that. Just trust him. Patience is God's character. Let's be more like the Lord. I did want to give you an opportunity this morning before we close. So if you guys would stand with me. And as I said, if we close this morning, we're going to close in prayer. But before I do that, I do want to give you an opportunity this morning that if you're here today and you'd say, Sam, I'm not a follower of Jesus, or I'm, I, 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 it was really, that was weird for me, or I, I don't know how to even, I didn't even know Jesus had a plan for my life. I want to give you an opportunity to respond to the gospel, to respond to Jesus drawing to you that offers salvation like the cross uh, from the cross that we talked about earlier in communion. If you're here today and you'd say, Sam, either I'm not right with God, it's been a long time since him and I talked, 
or I need, to get my, I, I need to confess my sin and repent and become a follower of Jesus. If that's you, with nobody looking around, just take a moment uh, just in, and be, if you're already saved, be praying for people who aren't. I want to give you an opportunity. If that's you, we're going to ask you to raise your hand. I want to pray with you. I want to lead you in a prayer. If you're watching online, you can comment and I will follow this up here after service. But reach out to us. Say, hey, I want to choose Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. If that's you today. You need Jesus here. You're not living right for him or you want to give your life to him for the first time. I ask you to raise your hand so I can lead you in that prayer. I'll give you a moment. Yeah. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word this morning. I thank you for the gifts and the fruit of the Spirit. I pray, God, that we would be a patient people, that we'd be a patient church. God, when it needs to happen, Lord, patience inspired and, and, and encouraged and led by you, God. That's how we want to operate. So Lord, send us out here today, God. Let us be people that show that patience with others as we're going to go out to eat, if we're going to uh, be with some family members or friends, people that push us and stretch us, God. Let us be and walk in patience. Lord, thanks for what you're doing already in our church. Thanks for what you did today, God. Let us take some of the things, uh, that, that moment, that word, that phrase, that verse that you maybe gave us in our quiet time, God. We would take that and run with that this week as you lead and guide us. Jesus, we love you, we praise you, we thank you that your presence is so sweet and so good. And we give you honor and glory today in Jesus' name. God's people said, amen. amen. Hey, what are we about here? Jesus is our hope. Community is our passion. Guys, God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us online.